Okay, it's another Astro video. I'm back from the summer. Got my bucket of light here and my mount. So uh, I have captured about five hours on the Crescent NGC 6888. The Brain Nebula, someone no one knows it for. So I'm gonna try to capture more tonight. Hopefully the moon, which is unfortunately full, doesn't interfere. So yeah, I'm gonna put the, all this shit together along with the cables and shit. Got cameras, ASI Air sitting there or somewhere. So yeah, let's enjoy the time ups of me doing that now. There we are, the scope is set up with the mount and the ASIR and the guide scope. So the only thing to wait for now is darkness. So in a couple for five hours you can start imaging I think, you know, first polar line of course. But then we can image. And uh, the forecast says about five hours of clear skies, so I think that's gonna be pretty good. And hey, I am back with some astro content, so no, I think either way it's a win um, and the Brain Nebula is a target I've been wanting to shoot for a long time so hopefully tonight turns out good so yeah let's uh, just wait a bit Here we are back in the morning. Um, I think we might have gotten a bit less lighter than I hoped for. I think we got perhaps about perhaps an hour. So you know it's something. We did have a full one, so you know not too bad. Fortunately, all things turned to hold position as it's supposed to do. So I think we're gonna have a look at the data now. So let's inside with uh, our data okay here's the bit that uh, went wrong I don't know if you can see this but it's all 30 second exposures and I guess you could also see that if you have a close eye on the feed from the ASIR only 30 seconds now I almost always shoot at uh, 300 seconds or 5 minutes which means I got 10 times less light on each exposure than I was supposed to. Uh, you know, I'm gonna try to stack these anyways and add it to the stack I already have, but you know, uh, it's it's an error you try to avoid. And I'm gonna show you now, like, what's what the error that causes, because the ASIR was set to do five minute exposures. So the thing is that uh, all Canon DSLRs or System cameras has uh, these modes on this wheel, and if you put it on M, I can show you here what it uh, does on the live feed. You can see, even if I turn this knob to add more time to the exposures, it can't go like if I go to the left here, it can't go past 30 seconds. But if I put it on bulb mode, it can shoot for as long as the shutter is down or as long as the ASIR is connected. and gives the signal to shoot. Now I uh, just let it stand on M because I do that when I focus and I forgot to put it back. I almost always remember to do that but this time I forgot so you know 
that's an error you don't want to do when you're <coughs> eye imaging so please remember that folks uh, I paid for that price uh, last night so let's just hope it doesn't happen again okay now we're going to add all of the lights so what we're going to do we just take the data I have from before so I just select all of this and open. Now take that in. Remember to check all. I'm gonna add the dark files for we need then 300 seconds. ISO 1600, and I think we were chilling at about 10 degrees. So I'm gonna take the master dark from this, and then add a offset bias for the correct ISO. and a flat file now didn't take files this time so i just reuse an old flat then we're gonna go into a second group and take our uh, data from last night which was now 30 seconds so select all of those open and check all I'm not sure if i have darks for 30 seconds Gonna have, no, we don't have docs for that, so um, too bad. But we do have can use the same flats because you know, still the same. Use. Okay, it's all red loaded, so I don't have to load it again. Nice, that single sort of for the bias. Then register check pictures and I'm gonna register already uh, fixed pictures. I'm just gonna compute the number of stars to check that it looks okay. 508, a bit too much, I think. Just take that thresh threshold down. Alright, I need to take it up <laughs> a bit long since I've stacked now, I feel. Okay, that's not a bit too high. A bit more down. 611. Okay, let's try a bit higher. 395, I think that's quite good. Okay, things are looking good in the recommend settings area. Go to stacking settings and output. You're gonna have to choose the output folder. Uh, so choose the folder that we already have. Perhaps put it in a new stacked file so I don't uh, confuse it with earlier stacks and then just go to check the result page and sender mode is what I go for okay and check the recommended again and yeah that looks good and just let it run we got in total now so what did okay so last night because of the clouds and I didn't I only shot in 30 uh, second exposure, I only added like 15 minutes, which is like barely anything. So, but you know, I'm just going to um, add them together anyways. So, let's just run it and uh, see how it turns out. Okay, we have our TIFF, uh, or our stack TIFF here. Uh, ready from the Deep Sky Stacker. It is a bit red, so I'm gonna run the photometric color calibration. Uh, see the primer just popped in here, so I'm gonna just search find. So it has found it here. Simbad catalog NGC 6888. And these primers seem okay, like the focal length is a bit larger than uh, what Skywatcher is claiming. But you know, it's probably right. So you can search and let it do its thing. There we are, it is finished. Next thing is the uh, background extraction. Just gotta generate and then remove those that are potentially in the way and add some of these places where it might be needed. Okay, I see I haven't cropped in, so I'm gonna have to do that afterwards because essentially can't use more than like crop sensor on this scope. 
gonna confuse the background. Okay, that does look quite derpy, I'll give you that, but just gotta apply it and crop out what I most certainly will not be using. So like, even like this is a stretch of what I can essentially use, so <clears throat> I'm gonna do that first and then kind of see. Okay, so that corner I will have to get rid of as well, but like... That, I think, looks better. And go into linear mode, because now we're going to do our primal stretch, or our prime stretch. Sorry about that. 15, so just zoom in on his gram. Touch the left side of the peak. And then just take the stretch intensity up to 15. Protect the highlight, I usually go down to like 7 point. Five on the highlight protection and then just stretch like a bit. We do not want to oversaturate anything, just like bring up some of the data so that we can now remove the stars a bit more, like straight before halfway. Yeah, I think that's good. Hit apply, close, and before we export to Starnet, I'm going to just uh, adjust the black point like that. Yeah, pretty good. You see, we haven't clipped anything. I just pushed the left side up towards the peak. So just apply, and close. Then I'm going to save this. Let's see how it looks. Oh, did it spawn in another one? No. Oh, I opened the wrong data. <laughs> Okay, one more time. Yeah, it just landed on the bottom. There we are. It does look a bit blotchy, but that's completely normal. We have this beautiful nebula. It is a wee bit noisy, but we can fix that. What I'm going to do first is do another stretch. This time, I'm going to do a bit different. I'm going to do like mark some of the lighter areas of the background and use this as an eyedropper. And then still going to push down the highlight protection point and then stretch it a bit. Now this will reveal more of the nebula. And it's important to not overstretch in this stage and you know this is where a lot of people like do exactly that. They overstretch it and what could have been really good data it just gets lowered by overstretching. Now like even this might be a bit too much, so we'll just bring it back down a bit. Get a bit up. Yeah, that looks good. Hit apply. And close window. Decent. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is do a very, very careful uh, subtractive greenness. Perhaps do like 0.004. Oh, no, uh, 0.04. I mean, apply and see that it doesn't destroy. Okay, that, that's better. It doesn't look magenta. And it didn't destroy, I think, the color balance. Okay, next thing, I'm going to do a color saturation. And the and I usually take a quite a high background factor and let GIMP later do the like more like precise work. It's important that we don't oversaturate colors. Like this for example, that's too saturated. So just bring it a tad back down. We don't oversaturate the colors. So just preview, review, there, there we are. I think that's good. Then I'm going to run some denoising. Usually uh, this Anacomb VST, but also the Data Adaptive Dual Domain Denoising. That is very good. This computer is a bit weak for this, uh, but I think it's going to turn out quite good. So let's just run that. 
and see how the results turn out. Okay, the noising is done. Let's just have a look. Yes, it perhaps uh, is reducing a bit of the finest details, but the overall image is better, I think. We just have a look in before and after. You know, not that much detail I've lost. So I think the DA3D did a very uh, good job. So I think this is what I'm going to do for Cyril. I'm going to save this as a TIFF and um, I'm going to go into GIMP with it. So Cyril done dot TIFF is what I usually just call it. Save it in the same folder as all of the other ones. Oh, there we are. And let's write the name here. Like that. Now this we can save as a 32-bit because GIMP has no problem with a 32-bit uh, floating point. So just save, and we're done with the serial part. All right, let's start uh, in GIMP here. So I'll just bring in our data. So we got it here. So that should be zero done. That looks pretty good. And we'll also bring in the uh, before star removal. So that was just the initial stretch. And as a layer, I will add the star removal. Do a little trick here just to uh, add the subtract on the starless part of this layer. So I just go to subtract, and there's our pure stars layer. So we can see it says only remove the background. So if I uh, like turn off this, you can see it only removes the background. The stars are the same. So Starnet does a really good job of doing that. So, but before we add the stars, I am going to do the adjustments in GIMP here on the starless. First thing I'm going to do is remove some of the halos. So just, I'll just call this layer heal. Like so, perhaps that's, I think that's pretty good. So we'll add a new from visible. This time I will add a luminance mask. So what you do is you go into add layer mask and grayscale copy of image and do not invert the mask. And masks work this works this way that the white will get the effect and the black will not get the effect. So we're gonna have to adjust this mask a bit by going into levels. And this time we want to only apply it to the nebula. So I'm gonna try to block out everything else. Of course, it's, it's not going to be perfect, but you know, we'll try to push it close, bring the whites a bit closer in. Do not blow it entirely out. Okay, let's push that a bit further in. Tad further. Like just a touch and word. Okay, I'm going to say that that's a good mask. Take it off, and then I'm just going to saturate this a bit. Or to zoom in and just check on it. It's good. And also add contrast. It's just like an S curve. I think that has a good look to it. Without, you know, too obvious of that. This is a mask. I'm gonna go new from visible and we'll call this uh, 
high pass. As I'm going to now try to sharpen uh, finer details in this uh, uh, nebula or the crescent. So that's I'm going to then add a black mask, and then go with the earlier mask. Uh, press Control C, and then uh, Control V. Then hit the anchor sign, and that's going to just copy the mask downward. Then we can uh, do the high pass. So filter, enhance, high pass. That was the wrong one. That's the right one. Like so. Let it just compute the high pass layer. And go into. I'd usually try hard light first. See how it looks. And I think hard light looks really good on this. You see, it does kind of become a bit pixelated. So. I think I might like hit the opacity down. I think it, this is an important difference. But opacity maybe 75 is good. Let's have a look. Always have a look at the like kind of see, does it improve? I think it does. I'm going to just kind of smooth it out a touch. So add a new black mask. And uh, it's in our layer mask, so enhance noise reduction. Yeah, I think it does a good job. So let's take new from visible. And you know what? I think the crescent is looking good. So why not take the background? So BG mask, I'm gonna call it. A new layer mask, and I'm actually just going to do the same as last time. Import the mask, and then I'm going to invert the mask. We're gonna to have to do a bit of adjustment so we don't like molar what we just did. Not that much. We want to like apply it on the lighter parts of Nebula. So, oh, okay, that looks good. So, quick show lay mask, and then I'm going to firstly do a heavy noise reduction, like really heavy. There we are. Let's just have a little look. See that? I think we can actually be a bit more aggressive on the mask. So let's just have a look at a mask. So, yeah, we can definitely push this into the nebula more. See what that does. I think this does this did a really good job, especially in the background. Awesome job. Let's also do a bit of desaturation. That way it's also gonna show less noise. But like I think 0.93 is probably quite good. Just also remember to saturate the earlier masks of the nebula. That doesn't get washed. Good. Do you boost the reds and the blues more? Red. Yes, please. Blues, yeah.
pretty good. Okay, I think it is time to introduce the stars. So just paste it on top. Looking good. And screen there. Now, this is pretty good. But I think the stars may take a bit too much space, so I'm going to take down the opacity a bit. But I'm also going to go into levels and push the luminance of the stars down. Not that much. Maybe like 0.8 is good. Yeah, I think 0.8 looks really good. Okay, then I'm going to make a new image. Draw this onto the new image. And I like the crescent like so it looks like in, in a like up orientation with a three with a euro sign pointing down. So it looks kind of like a brain. So I'm going to rotate and write in 90 degrees and rotate. I like it. It also kind of cropped away the corners with the worst vignetting. So we're going to also have to do a bit of a crop. Choose one by one. Like that. And I think that is the image done. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. Hopefully I do a lot more of these videos in the upcoming winter. So see you on the next one. Clear skies.